Hey, Rick. 234 years ago, the founding Caucasian Fathers of America gave us the Second Amendment. Time's running out, Richard. We're coming after you and every motherfucker that stole this election with our Second Amendment. Subpoenas be damned. You're going to be served lead, you fucking, fucking enemy communist You will be served lead. We'll make the Boston bombings look like child's play at the poll sites in this county. You just effing wait. No one at these places will be spared. The first email that my wife received, your husband should tell the truth or your three kids will be fatally shot. Cops can't help you, Q. Then provides a link to an image of our home. Well, we started receiving lots of disturbing phone calls. My staff is almost exclusively African-American and they started receiving calls laced with racial slurs. Starting on Christmas Day through New Year's Day, I received in my voicemail probably it was at least 100 voicemails up to 150. You ought to blow your fucking brains out, you piece of shit. If you have a hand in this, you deserve to go to prison. You actually deserve to hang by your goddamn soy boy skinny ass neck. Either you're blind or you're crooked as fuck. So figure it out, buddy, because which side you gonna be on when the fucking shoot starts, brother? They started to do surveillance on my staff, taking pictures of, of all of the individuals that would come in and come go in and out of the warehouse. They would uh, take pictures of their license plates. And I think at that point, especially for, for my staff and I, the, we, were, we were feeling as though um, we were under siege. So this email is what we had received on January the 2nd. It states, this election is effing rigged. Detonations will occur at every polling site set up in this county. No one at these places will be spared. My first thought was this cannot be happening here. This does not happen in Paulding County. The first calls I made were to the higher ups. Um, I was told that we had to take this as a serious threat. And when you start seeing the plan that the law enforcement has drawn out where we, you know, have to park our cars up against the building because, you know, our office is on the ground floor, there's glass, windows that we, you know, we're all sitting in front of. And the statement that pierced me was when he said, if a vehicle were to pull up, at least this would soften the blow. And when he said that, that was when I thought, this is real, this is real. How dare someone pick this county to try to basically um, scare the voters out of going and casting their vote. There was a concerted effort to discredit the results from Philadelphia before a single vote was cast or counted. I'm urging first. my supporters to go into the polls and watch very carefully because that's what has to happen. Bad things happen in Philadelphia. Joining me now is Philadelphia City Commissioner Al Schmidt, a Republican. We might add commission. After an interview on CNN, my communications director came up to me and said, the president just tweeted about you. Not long after the former president tweeted at me, I received the first uh, specific threat. You lied, you're a traitor. Perhaps cuts and bullets will soon arrive, gave my address. Mentions my wife by name, mentions my kids by name, including my daughter by her nickname. Rhino stole election. We steal lives, Q. I spoke to my wife a little bit after that she had begun receiving threats on her work email. So she then took our kids and relocated away from our house. After that, some days later, there was another email message. 
The subject line are my the names of my children. And I'm not comfortable reading the rest of it. We now had 24-hour police protection undercover outside of our home or wherever my family was, wherever they went. The real danger to this environment right now and threats and all the rest is you have good people who are very experienced, who have been running elections for a long time, quitting and retiring. So I'm really proud of the fact that in a non-arrogant manner, but that I am the highest vote getter or was the highest vote getter in Scott County in, in the history. I like to say Iowa nice. You know, we're not Maricopa County. We're not Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're not a large populated community. The unfortunate thing is, is that I believe Iowa was the first state that imposed a uh, whole litany of new election laws, which was followed by numerous other states. A bill that would significantly change Iowa's election laws is heading to Governor Reynolds' desk. The state Senate passed Senate File 413 on Tuesday. I think the importance of understanding what this bill is about is the criminalization of election officials. Under Senate File 413 in Iowa, the criminalization of not only uh, election chairs, such as myself, a commissioner of election, but poll workers or election workers, that's criminal. That could be a misdemeanor or a felony. This is simply just saying that, you know, if you do something unwillfully that you could still be fined, $10,000 is a lot of money to a lot of us. And we're seeing this across the country as they've moved from Iowa to other uh, states as well, where we're seeing election officials actually exit and you're taking institutional knowledge away. After a difficult year in 2020, with both the primary and general election, I have decided it's time for me to retire. The extensive election changes just enacted by the Iowa legislators will only make these limitations even worse. I cannot thank the citizens of Scott County enough for their many years of support through my journey in life as Davenport City Council member, a Scott County Supervisor, and then the last 14 years as Scott County Auditor and Commissioner of Elections. Sorry. I'm capable of taking quite a bit, but 2020 was a little too much for me at my office, and the criminalization of what might be a mistake just really cemented it for me. We have had a, a couple people leave since the election. As you have these important elections go on, if too many people with institutional knowledge leave, that is actually probably more of a threat to election integrity than the few people out there that may try to commit election fraud. I think at this point I've decided to stay because, you know, if, if I leave, um, I think the, the conspiracy theorists, uh, uh, they win. I won't be running for re-election again a couple years from now. I had made that decision before any of this, but having gone through it, I think it's confirmed that it's the right, it's the right decision. I think we're at a dangerous spot, not only because so many election administrators will likely be leaving after this last presidential election, but who could potentially be filling their places? We did lose a lot of good people in elections throughout the state. Um, one thing, you know, if we weren't losing them due to COVID, and we did lose, you know, I lost some good friends that are in the election business. People were quitting because they were afraid, they were um, worn out. The 2020 election seems to have just not stopped. Whether it's calls for these sort of sham audits across the country, or legislation that's being passed in state houses, attempting to reform the election code in ways that will limit or restrict access in the name of increased voter integrity. So I think the 2020 election and its aftermath are still very much with us, and I don't see any end to it yet.